Hi, this is Mrs. Lyons. Today we're going to talk about naming and writing formulas for simple ionic compounds. So the first thing we want to do is name compounds. So if we're given the formula, we want to give that compound a name. The first thing we do is we write the name of the cation. This is going to be the metal, always, and that's going to come first. And then we're going to write the name of the anion, or the nonmetal, and that's going to come second. The one thing we're going to always do is change the ending of the nonmetal to IDE. So let's look at some examples. First thing we have, our first example is BAI2. So we want to write the name for this. So the name of BA, we look at our periodic tables, is barium. I is iodine, but we're going to change the ending. So we're going to change the ending to IDE. So this is going to be barium iodide is going to be our compound name. Notice we are not doing anything with the subscripts. With these little numbers, we're just ignoring them. They don't take part, they don't become part of the name. So let's look at example two, Li3N. The metal in this case, or the first element, the cation, is Li, lithium. The second element in this compound is N, which we should know is nitrogen, but we're not going to write it as nitrogen. We're going to write the IDE ending, so the compound name is going to be lithium nitride. Example number three, Al2O3. Al is aluminum. O is oxygen. Again, we're going to change the ending to IDE, so oxide. Last example, KF. We know K is potassium. F is fluorine. We're going to change the ending to IDE, so we've got potassium fluoride. The other thing we need to do is sometimes we'll be given the name of the compound, and we will need to change that into a formula. So the steps that we're going to take in doing that is to write the symbol of each atom and the charge of each atom. Okay. Then we're going to do something that I refer to as crisscrossing charges. So we switch the charges down and they become the subscript for the opposite atom. Then we're going to drop the positive or negative from the charge. We don't need the charge in the um, formula. And then finally, if possible, we're going to simplify. So let's look at some examples. Let's say we have a compound and the name is sodium oxide. Okay, so we're going to look at this and we're going to say sodium. I know that sodium is Na. It's in group 1, so it's going to have a plus 1 charge. We're going to look oxide comes from oxygen. So we look at our periodic table. Oxygen is O. It has a negative 2 charge. So we crisscross these charges. This is what I'm talking about when I say crisscross charges. I bring the 2 down, it becomes a subscript for sodium. I bring the 1 down, it becomes a subscript for oxygen. I'm going to rewrite that, Na2. Oh, I don't need to include a subscript that's 1. Let's do another example. Let's say I have barium bromide. Okay, so again, I'm going to look at my periodic table. Barium is Ba. Barium is in group 2, so it forms plus 2 ions. Bromide is... Br, it's in group 17, so it forms minus 1 ions. I'm going to crisscross these charges. So I bring the 1 down here, the 2 down here. My formula is going to be Ba, I don't have to include the 1, Br2. All right, let's do a third example. Let's say we have aluminum nitride. Okay, so we look at our periodic table. Aluminum is Al. 
it's got a plus 3 charge because it's in group 13. Nitrogen is in group 15. It's going to form a minus 3 anion. Now if we crisscross these charges, we get Al3N3. So we have Al3N3. Here's where that whole idea of simplifying comes in. If our subscripts can be divided by a common multiple, a common, common factor, we're going to do that. So we're going to divide both of these by 3, so our simplified and correct answer would just be Al n okay if you don't simplify you're going to miss those certain compounds so that's naming and writing formulas for simple ionic compounds hope that helps